Okay, today we're going to go through a technique known as PCR or polymerase chain reaction. This is a technique where uh, DNA is amplified using known primers against a specific piece of DNA. The DNA will be amplified by the polymerase chain reaction and the products of the reaction can be seen using uh, agarose gel electrophoresis. The uh, gel is viewed under UV light and you can run markers of known size of base pairs and this can determine the size of the DNA which has been amplified. Okay, there are several reagents which are required for producing the master mix for the reaction. The first reagent is buffer, which provides an optimum solution conditions for the reagents to work. This is added to your reaction tube. The next reagent is magnesium chloride. Between reagents, always make sure you change the tip so you don't contaminate your reagents. Magnesium chloride will be added. Pipettes are used to ensure that you get the correct volume of each reagent. As you add the reagent to your master mix, you tick off your working list to make sure that you know you've added your reagent and that you don't add double the volume that's required. So the next reagent will be magnesium chloride. Uh, and magnesium chloride helps the enzyme to anneal to the DNA strand. The enzyme used is TAC polymerase, which is added at the end. And the magnesium chloride has been added. Each volume of reagent is known on your worksheet. And the pipette is adjusted to get the correct volume to add to your working master reagent. Okay, the next reagent is the forward primer. And the primer is a piece of DNA which corresponds to the piece of DNA that you're actually looking for. And the next reagent is the reverse primer. This is added to your master mix. As you can see, all reagents are kept on ice. The next reagent to add are the dinucleotide triphosphates and these are the bases which will be used by the enzyme to synthesize the new DNA in the amplification process. After the dinucleotide triphosphates have been added, a volume of distilled water is added to the master mix. And the final reagent to be added to the master mix is the TAC polymerase. TAC meaning Thermus aquaticus, which is the bacterium from where the enzyme has been obtained. And that's added to the master mix and that's ready to use, and that's ready to um, be added to the sample. Okay, so now we have our four tubes ready with the master mix present and all that remains is to add our DNA sample to each tube. The tubes have been pre-labelled beforehand and the scientist just checked the tube to make sure she was adding the correct sample to the correct tube, which is vital when you're doing any assay. And the sample is mixed well with the master mix reagent. Sample 3. And a fresh tip is used each time for each new sample. So now the sample has been added to the reagent. And the next step will be the thermal cycling of the DNA to allow the polymerase chain reaction to occur. Once the samples are prepared, they are then placed in the thermal cycler. The lid is closed and the cycle is started.
and the cycler was pre-programmed to reach certain temperature for a certain period of time. The initial temperature is 95 degrees for five minutes and this allows for complete denaturation of the DNA and then the double-stranded DNA separates and the primer attaches once it's cooled to 45 to 60 degrees. This is where the annealing of the primer and the single-stranded DNA occurs. The, the cycler heats again to 72 degrees C where the DNA polymerase amplifies the DNA and then it is heated again to 95 degrees to separate, denature the double-stranded DNA. This is, takes place over 30 cycles and the final extension is at 72 degrees centigrade for 5 minutes. Once the cycling is complete, the sample, samples are removed from the thermal cycler and placed on ice and they are now ready to be run on an agarose gel or they can be placed in the freezer to be stored until they are ready to be run on an agarose gel.